Welcome to Follow Your Joy Podcast, where intuition is the doorway to your wisdom, your genius, and your joy. I'm your host, Marla Diane, and I've been transforming creative entrepreneurs' lives for over 26 years. Through two businesses as a success coach and a business strategist, and prior to that, an entertainment publicist and a talent manager for two decades. It's time to make joy your inner GPS for life and business decisions rather than lean on your logic and reason first. You'll not only be following what is most authentic to you and for you, but you will live the beautiful life that's meant just for you. We'll come to learn that following your joy is a life and a business strategy. Listen in for inspiring entrepreneurial stories and solo casts that illuminate how by trusting your intuition, you'll create a fulfilling result. Want to learn how to access, trust, or up-level your intuition? Join me in the conversation to find out how. Good day, creatives. By now, you will have listened to my solo cast um, and seen the stories on social media of my sixth annual Creative Leaders Series. I'll call it the publicist in me who spent 22 years in PR prior to coaching, but boy, I love a good human potential story. And I so enjoy shining the light on those who deserve recognition. My team and I just delivered six weeks of celebrating 27 years being a creative entrepreneur. And we did that by showcasing my Creative Leader series where I featured five women entrepreneurs who have what I call a zest for life and their artistry while being incredibly talented, resilient, faith-driven, and exemplary in serving their communities with their zone of genius and their purpose. We featured one woman per week, which started with my own story on March 2nd where this all started as a young girl with big dreams and a love for writing. That's my lead in. I'm delighted to bring you one of those vibrant, passionate women today, Thea Wood. She's founder and president of Horizon Music Foundation. She spent over 30 years in corporate and startup worlds with an emphasis on female empowerment in music. I love how you kind of, you're going to connect the dots on this one. She decided it was time to shift back and give back in 2018 by forming her own music foundation and podcast, which became a reality about six months into it. Thanks to her, as she calls it, her diverse expertise and ability to pull together a lean but a mighty group of experts. <laughs> her noteworthy background um, led up to her current success, and this includes being a content programmer to working with record labels and national music magazines, Viacom, and more, and her journalism expertise, which we definitely share that together had her as a managing editor and a contributor for newspapers and international trade magazines. She then, of course, the entrepreneur that she is, published her own international digital magazine for women called She Spark. I remember that. And she's proud to have TEDx in her speaking journey. She also had an image consulting business, which I know is really, really popular. And her love of music, again, connect all the dots here. Her love of music has her playing the piano and guitar and singing mostly in the car. (laughs) All right. So welcome, Thea. Thank you so much, Marla. It's so nice to be here. Yeah, I love having you here. Yes. So good. So before I go into the interview, if I know the guest, I like to kind of share how we met in kind of our little bit of our history, <clears throat> which I believe we we met in my newsletter. I don't know how you opted in or how that came about into my newsletter, but somewhere around, I think 2016, 
And you just, we just started kind of emailing back and forth. You'd like, you would email me on just, oh, I love that blog story and blah, blah, blah. Or you'd make a comment about something in my newsletter. And um, yeah, we just kind of started connecting through our writing, right? We did. We did. And, you know, our you and I both were kind of in different places in life then. And it seems like a lifetime ago. Yeah, but I when know. you think about it in the grand scheme of things, it's just so much has happened since 2016. Uh, so, so much. Yeah, you were an image consultant at the time. Mm -hmm. That's when you yes. that. Oh, that's right. And we were even, we were looking at, I think I remember reaching out to you at some point to want to speak to the image consultant industry, some association. I don't know if you remember that. Yes, it was. Uh, yes, it was uh, the Association of Image Consultants yes. International. Yeah. AICI. That's and you it. had reached out saying, Hey, you know, let's talk about, you know, speaking engagement. So I think like we kind of connected you right. up with that. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh. Good memory. Yeah. Wow. Something like that. And yeah. then fast forward in 2021, you enrolled in my transform your money relationship program. I did. And we just continued after that six week program was done. We just continued for a year of coaching. Mm -hmm. which really did, as far as I, I could witness, and you can share your own, really did some wonders for you. And it was, you know, right after the, you know, the first year of the pandemic and you trying to, you know, kick off the, your horizon foundation. I mean, there was so much going on for you. So yeah, yes, we dove into a lot. We did. And, you know, it's, I think that the critical thing about that whole period is mm -hmm. that not only did I have a major shift in my life with um, with leaving my career, starting a new foundation, mm -hmm. but my family moved cross country. I remember that. Yeah. So we moved from Texas to Michigan, Michigan. during a major pandemic yeah. and at a time when um, I was only about eight months into the new nonprofit which was based on live music, which of course went dark during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I just felt like there were so many things coming at me at once. And mm -hmm. uh, I was having a hard time. There was a lot happening. And at the same time, I was feeling stuck. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And that is why, mm -hmm. you know, our work together was very um, critical in getting me over that. Yeah. 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 You did. You did. I mean, I remember putting together <clears throat> in the first several months, kind of a list of all the things that you had accomplished. And I said, okay, so it's time for a little acknowledgement here, Missy. And you know, I remember looking at that list with you and you're like, oh God, okay, that's, that's pretty remarkable. So yeah, you know, give yourself mm -hmm. a big, big pat on the back in the middle of all of that you know, the craziness with the pandemic and you trying to start everything, you were also recalibrating you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And yeah. and I'm glad that you brought up about the pat on the back, because I think a lot of people, we have so much pressure to produce and produce very quickly, especially mm -hmm. as creatives. Yeah. And it because people just think it's easy. It's not. Um, being creative, it takes a lot of energy and focus. Mm -hmm. And so you tend to look at what needs to be done constantly in that arena instead of taking a moment to sit back and say, well, what did I accomplish? And then yeah. you look back and you say, oh, wow, actually I did much better than I thought. And mm -hmm. it actually gives you a boost for taking on what's next. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Yeah. From, from my perspective, obviously as a coach, I, I, I make sure, and I like to do this because high achievers, right, which is who I typically coach. And that's, you know, your middle name is that, <laughs> is that we do, we have a hard time stopping, acknowledging, looking at, okay, where have I been, right? What have definitely, what's been my victories? What's been my successes, even though through the challenges, it's just, it's not, I don't think it's a natural thing for us. I think for for anybody, for that matter. So I think it's super important to acknowledge that, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, good. All right. So you've had 
you know, a very inspiring creative journey for sure. Explain a little more to us what shift back and give back means when you were forming the Music Foundation and podcast. What was happening for you? Uh, That was when I was in the uh, kind of throes, if you will, of really working with a lot of women on image consulting, uh, which for those who aren't familiar, it's really about the, uh, your appearance and your behaviors and communications that say basically what your personal brand is. And it's very much a visual, right? I was a certified image consultant. And along with that, uh, I really specialized in working with women who were in male dominated industries. So at that point, because I'd had a long time of a a lot of uh, background in the high tech industry, I worked with a lot of women in high tech, especially in Austin. Um, Also, I had a lot of uh, attorneys that I worked with, women in construction, uh, doctors. It was a very interesting mix of ladies, but the ones who tended to gravitate toward me were the ones who were in mainly male dominated industries and the music industry, which is where I started my career is most certainly falls under that. Mm -hmm. And I would say even more so than technology, which surprises people. Um, But I had been out of the music industry per se for a long time. And it's hard to get back into that industry when you get married and have children. Mm -hmm. Uh, There is there's just a lot systemically that works against you on how that industry is set up. And so I waited and I waited and I, and I went on my journey with image consulting, which I loved. But uh, in 2018, I saw Joan Jett's documentary, Bad Reputation. (laughs) She's a badass. And that woman heard no more than anybody has any right to hear should ever deserve to hear. And she, you know what she did? She made her own opportunities. And I walked out of that theater feeling so excited and empowered and invigorated. And I wrote an article saying that was called Three Lessons That Joan Jett Taught Me for my digital magazine, She Spark, which was for women who are over 40. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and in doing my research, I said, well, let's take a look at the, you know, music industry. I've been out of the, you know, out of it for 20 some years. I want to see what's happening right now. And sadly, Marla, nothing as far as female representation had changed Mm. in the 20 years that I had been in it. And in some ways it had gotten worse. The gender disparity had gotten worse. Mm. And um, it was, I don't know, something clicked in me. And I was like, you know what? This is ridiculous. And it, I've been t- thinking forever about how can I get back into music or or give back to music because it brings me so much joy and I love it so much. And I decided it's time. And so I decided to shift back to the music industry and give back to um you know the music that I love and is the soundtrack of my life and mm-hmm. in some ways has saved my life. Well, I can't help but ask, what do you mean saved your life? Well, you know, I think it's for everybody. You have mm-hmm. heartbreak. What do you do? You turn to music. music. Uh, you're at a party and, and having fun with your friends. Mm-hmm. What do you do? You sing out loud together. Look at the weddings. Mm-hmm. Everybody's singing and dancing together. Mm-hmm. It's for celebrations. It's for uh, romance, mm-hmm. weddings. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. It's for, uh, you know, it's it's part, like I said, it's the soundtrack of life. And um, it gets us through a lot of hard times. And if nothing else has proven that, Ooh, yeah, the pandemic. Sure. Um, I mean, record uh, music streams, mm. people uh, finding new uh, new artists that they love. Mm. Uh, the The music industry profited quite a bit during the pandemic. And it's because it soothes us and it helps us get through the hard times. Mm. Now, sadly, the artists didn't see that as much as... Uh, the labels and, and, you know, the corporations did, but that's a whole other story. Yeah. Now that was, um, <clears throat> I remember that, you know, during that time and seeing so many performers, you know, figuring out how to make studios if they didn't have them in their homes mm-hmm. and performing on Facebook, performing on, you know, YouTube when they hadn't done that before. I mean, I remember watching Melissa Etheridge, and she had created, I think, in her garage, this whole new studio just so that she 
could be performing. And she was also doing a lot of free concerts on mm-hmm. Facebook during the That's pandemic. Amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, absolutely mm-hmm. amazing. All right. So <clears throat> what to share with us, what brings you the most joy in your work and, uh, you know, what you do every day? Well, it would probably be no surprise when I say I get to see a lot of live music. (laughs) (laughs) We love that. So certainly that is (laughs) a lot of joy. But um, meeting the artists in the music industry, sharing their stories. My podcast, Backstage Chats with Women in Music, uh, we talk to not only the artists and people who are on stage, but also the people who are on air, the people who are behind the scenes. Uh, there's so There are so many ways that women contribute to the music industry that is that a lot of us don't even realize in roles that we don't think of. And I think that by uh, sharing their stories and and their contributions, we can influence and inspire the next generation to say, Oh, well, I didn't realize that that was a thing. And that could really interest me. And and, uh, yes, I, I want to try that and get more women involved in all, all areas of the music industry. So Mm -hmm. that brings me joy. And Hey, and if I can, and if I can inspire somebody to do something different or have fun or go out on a limb, man, that's, that's fulfilling. That makes me feel great. I had uh, Denise Perrant is in the first all female Grateful Dead cover band. Oh, and I was so excited to interview her. She's co-founder and she's the drummer and the singer. Mm -hmm. And when we were talking, I, things, the questions and the conversation led her to be inspired for the Mm. first time to record her own music. Mm. And she went out and recorded an album and released an album after that. And I was like, wow, just us having a conversation helped give her the motivation to do that. Hey, man, that just, when she told me that made my week, Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, that makes me feel so good. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the impact. No, it is the impact. In fact, that was going to be my, my next question. Share some highlights so far, how your platform has impacted the industry. Oof, okay. Well, I know there's you know, many. <laughs> there are many. Uh, actually, it's kind of fun that you asked that question because we just finished some highlights from our annual report. Okay. And um, the first thing is spreading awareness because so many people are shocked when they hear some of the statistics about representation of women in music. And for those who are interested in getting a better picture, please go to horizonmusic.org and start reading and and look at what we have to say on our social media because we post about it quite a bit as far as gender disparity and things that we could be doing to um to lessen the gap Mm -hmm. but um we we found out we did all our numbers and in 2022 we reached 78,000 people in our social media Oh, I mean, that's a huge reach. That means yeah. that people are listening and they're and they're excited to hear what we have to say and meet new independent artists. Right. So um, supporting women in through education, through work experience and role modeling. The podcast is a great role modeling tool. Yeah. Um, the education portion, we have rise, Teen Rising Star this year. We just announced our third annual Rising Star Award winner, mm-hmm. and her name is Amethyst Jonquil, and she's from Austin, Texas. Oh, my gosh. I mean, jo- if you like Joni Mitchell, you'll love mm-hmm. Amethyst, oh. which is amazing to say about a woman who's only 18 years old. Wow. Wow. Uh, amazing songwriter, yeah. singer, player. So uh, <laughs> what we do for our, our uh, rising stars is that we get them a photo shoot. We build out a website for them and an electronic press kit. We get them paid gigs. We get them interviews on shows, uh, radio shows, uh, online shows, so that they can start, they get the support to see what it's like. And um, two of our, our first two rising stars before they... Uh, they came on board with us as a rising star had been playing out, but they had never been paid. Mm. Mm. They had been playing out at clubs and had never been paid. And the first Mm -hmm. thing that we said is those days are over. Yeah. No kidding. You will always be paid for your work. 
And you have to understand that you are of value and your music is of value and no one should take that for granted. Wow. So, yes. So we, you know, we are very big on making sure that, you know, that is instilled early on. So we think that that's mm -hmm. a big impact. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, with the pandemic, which of course, you know, I hate to say it, Marla, but there were times where I was like, I think I'm throwing it in the towel. I don't know if I can do this. And fortunately, I have a great board who turned me around and said, what are you talking about? <laughs> but um, <clears throat> the silver lining that came out of that was that uh, I came up with the idea of the first ever all female musician and DJ marketplace. So it, basically it's kind of like what Upwork or Fiverr does or Uber does. Let's say Uber, everybody knows Uber. So Uber or Lyft, they, you use this online marketplace to connect drivers with passengers. Well, that's what we were out to prove we could do with female artists and event hosts, whether it be online event hosts or in-person event hosts. And um, so phase one, uh, we're getting ready to wrap up here. We're starting phase two this month, which is a, a big rollout because we it was kind of like proof of concept. Can this happen? And um, we proved that it did. We did over twenty five hundred dollars in um, in bookings during this during this kind of you know workshop phase. And uh, now we're getting ready to really roll it out. So um, what people don't really understand is that as a consequence of the pandemic. 25% of women in the music industry don't know where their next dollar is coming from. And 33% are reporting a mental health crisis. Mm -hmm. And a huge part of that is because of the economics. So if we can get supplement their income mm -hmm. enough to maybe pay a bill or put dinner on the table one night for them and their family, mm -hmm. then that's one day or one step further that keeps them in the creative game mm -hmm. and being able to pursue music as a career. Hmm. All right. So <clears throat> the listeners here <clears throat> today can find specifics on your website <clears throat> about what that disparity is, how long it's been happening compared to the male industry. That's right. As well as our social media, because we definitely do that. And folks, I say sign up for our newsletter. We always okay. are talking about you know, <clears throat> the latest news with women in music, um, introducing you to independent artists. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have artist showcases last year. We streamed, I think all together, we streamed 12, um, showcases and more obviously coming this year. And it's all about saying, you know, we're here, we have a voice mm -hmm. and we're giving them avenues to show, to show what they can do. Yeah. All right. Excellent resource. <clears throat> Fantastic. And I know we could probably talk more about this for a good hour. But <laughs> for sure. Please, right. please, yeah, sign up for her newsletter and go to the go to her website to get lots and lots of excellent information. So, okay. <clears throat> Share with us about since the, you know, the premise to this podcast is about what following your intuition, listening to that, following your joy. Share a story about life or business where you did follow your intuition that led to a joyful, fulfilling result. Oh, well, this one, we're going back in time. <laughs> and the reason why I picked this one is because yeah. it's almost metaphysical. It's it, it's something that you might see on television or in a movie. Mm. Uh, I was uh, working at America Online mm -hmm. and I loved my job. Don't get me wrong. I loved working in America Online and, and I ended up getting an opportunity, being offered an opportunity to move from the Northern Virginia area to Austin, Texas. And I was really fretting over it because the opportunity was fantastic. It was more pay. It was for uh, more of a startup company. And mm -hmm. I love small business. That's what mm -hmm. I got my MBA in was small business and mm -hmm. I thought, oh, you know, AOL has gotten so huge and maybe I should take advantage of this opportunity. And I always loved Austin. And so before I went to bed, you know, I, I told the recruiter I'd sleep on it. And before I went to bed, I, you know, was laying there and I said, universe, please send me a sign. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I woke up the next morning and I think this 
I think this was a Saturday and I woke up the next morning and I, you know, got my morning breakfast together. It was a nice day out. And I went out, I got ready to open up my back door and go on my back porch. And I had this cute little courtyard outside of my condo. So it was all walled off. It was really private and nice. And Mm. I went, I opened up the door and I was like, wait, wait, what's going on around here Mm. on my back porch. And I'd been living at, I think I was there for three years. I had lived at that condo, never saw anything like this before. My entire porch and courtyard were covered in about a, a hundred frogs. Wow. <laughs> and I mean, hopping, chirping. Every, I couldn't even step out on my patio because they were everywhere. I was afraid I was going to step on one. Whoa. It was the craziest thing I'd ever seen uh. in my life. And I stepped back for a second. And at first I thought, oh my gosh, it's the end of the world. And then I you know, pestilence, frogs. What was that movie where frogs were falling yeah. from the sky that had Tom Cruise in it? Anyway, Magnolia, I think it was the name of it. Anyway, I was like, oh my God, it's the end of the world. But then I stepped back and I said, wait a minute, is this the sign that I asked for? Mm-hmm. And even though the n- internet existed back in 1998, it wasn't quite so robust that it is now. So mm-hmm. I ended up going to a bookstore and doing some research in the library and found that frogs are a symbol of new life and frogs were buried with pharaohs because they supposedly helped Egyptian royalty move from one life into the next. Interesting. And I thought, well, if that's not a sign, I don't know what is. That's, um, that's, I hadn't heard that from you. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that was a pretty yeah. wild one. And so I ended up going with that and the, <clears throat> and uh, the intuition all kicked in at that point. And um, I put in my two week resignation. Now there were other finer points and different things yeah. that happened as well. But that was really the catalyst. And mm-hmm. within two weeks of leaving my job, I had sold my condo, packed all my stuff, drove cross country and started my new job. Mm. Yeah. Didn't something else happen while you were there? Oh, let's see here. It has to do with romance. Oh, well, you know, it wasn't just a professional move. Um, I met my husband in Austin. There you go. And uh, the crazy (laughs) part about that, and this is another wild universe thing, Mm -hmm. is that I had gone into our little local watering hole. And it was the first or second time I'd only been there like twice. Mm -hmm. And when I had left at some point during that evening, I think I had dropped my purse. My purse had fallen over and I picked it up. And when I got home, I realized that my wallet was no longer in my purse. And I panicked and I called back to these people I don't even know. Right. And I said, hi, my name's Thea. And I think my wallet dropped off. And uh, the bartender said, oh, don't worry about it. We have it. Someone turned it in. Wow. Wow. Okay. And this was like in, I think it was 1999, early 1999. I said, oh, thank goodness. I went, I said, can I pick it up tomorrow? And she said, absolutely. We'll keep it behind the register. So I went in the next day, picked it up, never thought anything of it. Three years later, my husband and I started dating. And I think it was when we were finally engaged that I brought that story up for some reason to somebody. And Ricardo was, my husband's name is Ricardo. And he was with me and he said, Oh yeah, I was the one who picked up your wallet. What? I said, "Wait, what?" Oh, he said, my. "You didn't know that?" I said, "No, no one ever told me that you were the one who picked up my wallet." Of all the people, oh, that's wild. In the city of Austin, he was the one who found my wallet, picked it up, and apparently picked it up and said, "Who's this Thea Thea, Thea, Thea McHugh?" And uh, yes, he was the one who handed it in. Isn't that okay? That's pretty darn cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty and darn been, cool. And you've been married now how long? Oh my gosh, uh, seventeen years. Seventeen years. There you go. So it's the crazy. frogs were right. The frogs were right. <laughs> and 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 the thing is, is you know that's pretty wild, right? I mean, that's a wild story. And and by the way, yeah. everybody, just so you know, the next day when I went out in my courtyard, all the frogs were gone. Yeah, that's none of them were there. It was just that one day. And then they love, were love, love that story. But it's it, you know, and but our signs might be more subtle. 
And mm. something that you just have to keep your eyes open and know that your intuition is probably a huge part of what's happening there. That's right. That's what I love to hear. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. Good, good, good story. So uh, real, uh, in fact, I'm, I'm curious, how do you know the difference between intuition and logic? I feel like intuition tends to be something that comes to you and you don't, it, it may not make sense, but it feels right. Yeah. That's a, that's pretty, pretty spot on. That's exactly. You feel it in your bones. Yeah. You don't, <clears throat> you don't have to, um, you don't have to dwell on it for too yeah. long. It's, and it, and you, and I feel it. Do you feel it in your gut? Oh yeah. It's, it's a very, um, what I find is, <clears throat> It's a very calming, very um, <clears throat> soft, if you will, mm -hmm. feeling and knowledge. Whereas logic, which has, which has to do with our brain and ego and all of those things, practicality, there's usually um, a, a lot of emotion around it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. In other words, there's kind of drama. That's right. Whereas with intuition, it's quiet, it's assuring, it's something like you said, it just it just happens, it feels right. It's a big difference. Big, big difference. Yep. And when you ignore your intuition, it actually I have found it starts to hurt. <laughs> it gets louder. <laughs> it gets loud. It will, it yeah. doesn't like to be silenced. Yeah. And yeah. like it'll I'll feel it in my gut or I won't be able to okay. sleep at night. That's right. Yeah. If I'm going okay. against my intuition, it definitely affects my sleep. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Okay. Good, good, good. So, all right. Lastly, based on your vast experience, what key advice can you give our creatives listening? Oh, you know, and, it, and people might think, oh, it's, it's going to be a creative answer and it's not. <laughs> it's a very business answer. <laughs> Own your content. Oh, God. Own what you create. Put it on platforms that you have as much control over as humanly possible. And granted, sometimes you can't. Sometimes at first it's like, I, I this is what I can afford in order to get my art out there or my word or my message or whatever it is. Yeah. And that's understandable. But mm. as soon as you can mm. scale it and own it, do it. Because there is nothing worse than losing everything because somebody else messed up or switched platforms and everything disappeared. Or um, like we had an issue recently where I was part of a network that um, was helping, was like doing a group of podcasts together that were music related. And they switched us from one hosting podcast hosting platform to another and never got expressed permission from me. So I was not prepared and I did not have all my analytics taken care of. I didn't have anything happen. And I was like, what just happened? Like all of a sudden my entire podcast went dark Wow! and I didn't know what happened. And then the answer that I received after freaking out, sadly, <laughs> um, the answer that I received was, well, we put it in the message boards and we've been talking about it for weeks in the message boards. And I said, message boards, I have interns running my you know, a lot of my work and that posting it in message boards is not saying, do you agree to this? And are you on board? And, you know, are we ready? Are you ready to move? And so that's when I realized I need more control. And I ended up, even though it's more expensive, I ended up staying with um, this one platform that I love because I didn't want to move from it. And I said, I'm going to stick with this platform and I'm going to go back independent again yeah. so that I have control and nothing happens. So. Wow. Yeah. Very, very good advice. Yeah. Yeah. If you can. Yeah. And by the way, there's a huge um, mm -hmm. trend right now and people selling the rights to their songs. Hmm. And, um, and it's a great way to make income in, in a time where, you know, you have to have, what is it? A thousand, like 1200 streams to make a dollar or something like that um the streaming platforms so of course artists are looking for other ways to make money so they don't starve and um 
uh, my only thing there is I was like, I think it's a really good idea for older artists who maybe are thinking about retiring, Mm -hmm. but for younger artists, just be very thoughtful about that before you start going down that road. Nice. Very, very good. Okay. Thank you. So, all right, Thea, where can people get in touch with you and what would you like to offer uh, our listeners? Well, let's see here. Uh, To keep in touch with me, uh, horizonmusic.org, H-E-R-I-Z-O-N, music.org is where you can find out all about us and our team and what we're up to. And we would love to hear from you if you're interested in volunteering or doing some board work. Um, that would be great. Or even donating. We have lots of programs that you can sponsor. And so, um, would love to do that. Let me think here. If you'd like me to speak at any of your upcoming events, because I do a lot of speaking, uh, not just for podcasts, but also at, uh, women's empowerment events. Um, I'd be happy to, uh, we can talk about personal image as your rock star brand. We can talk about gender equity in the music industry or one that I've talked to you about before, which is aesthetic force by omission, which is a very interesting conversation. Mm. Um, But if you would like to do that, I'm happy to do so and give you a 25% discount off my fee if you mention follow your joy. Hey, look at that. That's very generous of you. Terrific. And where on social media can they find you? And we'll have this in the show notes. Of course, um, horizon underscore music for, uh, Instagram and TikTok, and horizon music foundation is our page on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And we also have a private Facebook group for those who want to talk all things, women in music. And, uh, if you are a musician, a female musician or a female friend at act, and you want to post show dates, we're super happy about that. And you can make a request to join horizon music as group. And that's again on Facebook. Correct. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Terrific. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being Thank you. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. And, you know, proud to have Thea as one of my creative leaders in our campaign. Now you see why? (laughs) (laughs) See why I chose her. So, all right, everyone. So good. Until next episode, as you work and live, always follow your joy and listen to that intuition, right? It's trying to tell you something. Pay attention and take action on that, okay? All right, have a wonderful uh, day, evening, wherever you are in the world, and uh, follow your joy. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening in. You can find more entrepreneurial stories and resources at MarlaDiane.com. And while you're there, enjoy my three free downloads to up-level your business and your life. How about you take a screenshot of this episode and tag me on Instagram by sharing your highlights of what you learned today. I'd love to connect there with you. Until next episode, take care.